We conclude this week's learning material with a lesson that I think is very practical and important, but it's also kind of a fun thought experiment. As you know, there's a lot of reason to be concerned at the rate at which we're using fossil fuels. Even if our planet were completely full of oil in its center, and of course it isn't, at some point if we use the oil and never replenish it, then we will run out. And I'm not going to argue about when that might be. That's not my concern. My concern is, are we replacing a potential oil crisis with a lithium crisis? If we adopt lithium ion battery cells for large scale applications like electric vehicles and grid storage and so forth, are we going to consume lithium at such a high a rate that we're likely to run out of lithium very soon? So people are concerned about this and it's an important question and it's one that we're going to ask and see what answer we come up with. The chart on this slide shows the relative abundance of every element in the periodic table in the Earth's crust. These elements are organized by their atomic number on the bottom axis and their relative abundance on the vertical axis. And you can also see on the vertical axis uh, that it's a logarithmic scale, which means that one axis unit above the other indicates a factor of 10 greater abundance. We're curious to see where lithium ends up on this chart. And if you look at the chart and study it for a little while, you'll see that lithium is between 20 and 100 times more abundant than either lead or nickel, which are used in present day battery cells uh, quite a lot. Um, so from that perspective, we would think that there might be plenty of lithium for batteries, at least compared to lead acid and nickel based chemistries. Now it's also true that it's difficult to find lithium deposits in nature since lithium is one of the most reactive elements and lithium is not usually found isolated in its elemental form all by itself. It's usually found in some lithium based compound instead. So, we need to find these lithium based compounds and do some processing on them in order to extract the lithium for use in our battery cells. So we'll consider that a little bit also. While we're on the slide, you might notice that the relative abundance of cadmium and mercury, whose usage is deprecated because of their toxicity, are about a thousand times less common than lithium, but they're still used commercially, including in battery cells. So the previous slide says that lithium is relatively abundant on this planet, but how much lithium would we actually need in an electric vehicle? So for purpose of example, let's consider a lithium cobalt oxide battery cell. If we go to the periodic table and look up the atomic mass of lithium and of cobalt and of oxygen, and we compute the mean atomic weight of lithium cobalt oxide and compare it with the mean atomic weight of lithium itself, we find that lithium cobalt oxide is approximately 7% lithium by weight. The positive electrode particles comprise only a portion of the overall cell construction as it's made. If we think about the entire cell, we find that lithium cobalt oxide comprises less than about one third of cell weight. And so the lithium content of the electrode turns out to be only about one third of 7% or about 2% of cell weight. And maybe you're wondering about lithium in the negative electrode. When the cell is manufactured, there is no lithium in the negative electrode. The first time you charge this cell is when lithium enters the negative electrode. And that's why we're considering only how much lithium is in a fresh lithium cobalt oxide electrode. Now there is some lithium in the salt used in the electrolyte, such as LiPF6. The electrolyte in total comprises about 10% of the cell weight. And if we use the lithium hexafluorophosphate or LiPF6 as our salt, the amount of lithium in the electrolyte is about 10% of the 10%. So overall, lithium in the electrolyte constitutes about 1% of cell weight. So combining the amount of lithium in lithium cobalt oxide and in the electrolyte, we find that a high energy lithium ion battery cell has about 3% of its weight that's made up from the lithium itself. So we're going to do some more analysis with that number to see what that means practically. But before we do that, I want to point out the photograph on this slide. Uh, this is a picture of piles of lithium salt from one of the most common ways of obtaining it in nature. 
enormous salt flats, primarily in South America, but we find them in other places as well, contain high quantities of these lithium-based salt compounds. So lithium is obtained by mining these salt flats, uh, by taking these salts and processing them, and then extracting the lithium from them. So let's continue with our example. Remember that we said that lithium content in a high energy battery cell is less than about 3% of that cell's weight. Batteries used in hybrid and electric vehicles weigh roughly seven kilograms per kilowatt hour. And so we can say that the lithium content is about 3% of that, or about 0.2 kilograms per kilowatt hour. How many kilowatt hours do we need? So we need to think about how large this battery pack must be for different types of vehicles. So let's consider an electric vehicle with a 200 mile electric range. It turns out that this vehicle needs about 60 kilowatt hours um, in its battery uh, in order to obtain that range. And you'll find out how to uh, compute that number, simulate that number in the second course in the specialization. But for now, I just state that number for you. So if we consider that we require a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and there's going to be 0.2 kilograms per kilowatt hour, that ends up being a total of about 12 kilograms of lithium per electric vehicle. Now, an electric vehicle is the stream extreme case for the purpose of transportation. A plug-in electric vehicle uses um, much less all electric range. So for a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, we would maybe require about 10% of an electric vehicle battery capacity. And a hybrid electric vehicle requires even less capacity than that. So let's take the worst case. Let's consider 1 million electric vehicles. These would require 1 million electric vehicles multiplied by 12 kilograms per vehicle or about 12,000 tons of lithium. 1 million plug-in hybrid electric vehicles would consume less than about 1,200 tons. To make the example simpler, we are assuming that there's no recycling, but of course all of these battery sacks will be recycled when they come to end of life. But even without recycling and by doing some simple arithmetic, we want to know if there's enough lithium on the planet to support our desire for electric vehicles. So if we go back to the chart on the first slide, and if we convert that data to actual quantities of each element, it turns out that the known available supply of lithium is over 200 billion tons. So by simple math, every human being presently alive could own more than 2,000 electric vehicles. And that's even without recycling. And if we are recycling, of course, we have an essentially endless supply if we assume our recycling efforts are ideal. So you may have seen news articles where writers try to make the public fearful about the lithium supply. And these authors cite different references as to the available supply of lithium in order to support their claims. But please note that the chart that was on the first slide of this lesson was generated by the United States Geological Survey, which is a very reputable source. But on the other hand, remember that this source includes the amount of lithium that, that's dissolved in seawater. And it turns out that the majority of, sea, of lithium available on our planet is dissolved in seawater. And it's fairly difficult to extract that lithium from the seawater. So it means that the analysis I perform here while being accurate is also a little optimistic because of that. So you have to weigh how much lithium is easily available versus how much there is total. And um, every year, more and more easily available lithium deposits seem to be found. And so it's my opinion, you can form your own, of course, that we really don't have a lithium crisis. So does that mean everything is OK? Well, maybe. But there are other elements used in lithium ion battery cells that turn out to be far more rare than lithium even. We've seen already this week that lithium ion battery cells use electrodes that are made from different materials. Now carbon, which is used in the negative electrode, is very common, so there's no real concern about that. Uh, and as long as we use graphite as our negative electrode material, uh, we're not going to run out of, uh, of that. But the positive electrode materials are a little bit less certain. Most positive electrode materials in commercial lithium ion battery cells use at least some cobalt. And cobalt is quite rare. 
And most of our cobalt supply comes from the Congo, which also has some political instability. So it may be reasonable to have some worry about battery technologies for electric vehicles, but in my opinion, not because lithium might run out, but because some of these other elements are quite rare. But there are solutions for that as well. Even if it turns out that our cobalt supply becomes very constrained, we already know that there are other candidate materials that can be used as the positive electrode of lithium ion battery cells that can replace cobalt. And we've seen that LCO can be replaced by NMC, which greatly reduces the amount of cobalt, or by NCA, which reduces the amount of cobalt, or even by iron phosphate or, um, or LMO. So in summary, I'm quite optimistic about the future battery supply uh, for electrified vehicles and other applications. So to summarize this lesson, it turns out that lithium is one of the most abundant elements on the planet. We've done some very simple back of the napkin approximate analysis, but even if it's a little bit wrong, it shows that the total supply of lithium is more than sufficient to meet demand for consumer electronics, for electrified drivetrains and other applications, even if we don't recycle. And of course, we're going to recycle and recycling can only improve this picture. Uh, on the other hand, there are other elements such as cobalt um, or other elements used in lithium ion battery cells that are more scarce than is lithium. But if for some reason uh, this doesn't get very much attention in the press, uh, and even so, as we've discussed, there are alternative compounds that could be used that don't rely on these rare elements and uh, are therefore much more abundant. So. To conclude, I'm quite optimistic about the supply of materials for lithium-ion battery cells in the future.